start actually just by welcoming you all. I'm Keith Gardner, Governor Martinez, the Chief of Staff. I want to welcome you all for coming out today. And to start off, we're going to do a quick video, um, just talking a little bit about what we're here for today. So if you want to spin the video, please. There's no possibility of my forgiving you. The question is, how on earth can you forgive yourself? Everybody's just trying to get along and have a good life. Yeah. Theories has a real mind authenticity. It's bigger than all of us. We're not used to seeing so many female characters. It's been my dream to be part of something like this. We have to show people that we're human too. And this is more than just a job. It's okay to have confidence. Oh, yes, balance. Yes, symmetry. Oh, hey, hey. Okay. Okay, I can't tell you how great it is to be out of the damn house. A common thread that holds every meal together is that we just want to be loved. There will be, I see you, I like the freaky. Suddenly, not a good one. They push down the freaky. I care, they even know our name. They were ignorant, they were negligent. We grew up like wild dogs in the sex days. We're being left a chance to put something right. You don't need a chance to use that thing, Mr. Don't go back and take positive. Please So in this time of partisan politics, I'm not wearing a red tie because of political um, persuasion. I'm wearing a red tie to welcome our newest family member to New Mexico, and that is Netflix. We're so excited to have them here. We're going to hear a little bit more about this. Welcome Netflix. That's a woohoo, right? <laughs> I'd like to invite one of my kids, Chris Barber, and Ty Warren from Netflix to come up and take a picture. Um, welcoming, welcoming him to the new home, and we'll do that here real quick. <laughs> do we want to move this? Um, I remember eight years ago, just about, uh, I was actually, had just left the legislature, Senator, uh, Mayor Keller was still in the legislature. I came down right after the governor was elected and had a discussion in this same soundstage about film in New Mexico. And this is a culmination of a lot of work, and we're going to hear a little bit about that, um, starting with uh, my boss, um, uh, Governor Martinez. You know, as Governor Martinez has been um, uh, a big proponent of, of changing the way New Mexico does business. Uh, since she's come into office, she worked very diligently on making sure that our economy could sustain um, and, and grow and be able to support the industries that have made our economy so strong, but expanding and making sure that each one of those industries has the ability to expand and grow and that we did that and she did this to make sure that the tools were there and the environment was there so that the private business could, could really grow and, and, and flourish. It's a huge day for New Mexicans to be able to see one of the largest, the largest media company in the world come and make his first U.S. home here in New Mexico. With that, I'd like to introduce Governor Martinez to talk a little bit about the state. Thank you. As we were standing up, or walking toward the chairs, uh, we're all afraid of sitting in those chairs because, um, they're, they're light, and, um, and if you're in a dress, and if you're a big guy, it can all just come tumbling down. And so when we walked in, and everything got real quiet, I thought that they're looking to see who's going to break one of these chairs and come tumbling down. And all their cameras are out. But Keith, thank you so much for what you've done. I know that you have worked very hard on this project, um, and our economic development teams have also worked very hard to make this a reality. I think that's what's special about New Mexico, is that we work together. We don't see ourselves as silos. We see ourselves as a team for New Mexico and we work together and put in the pieces that are needed to be able to make a project like this, make sure that Netflix uh, sees New Mexico as their home as well. And so I'm extremely grateful to everyone. 
Today we're here, to, of course, to celebrate a huge, huge win for New Mexico. As you can see, Netflix, the world's leading entertainment, center, entertainment service, is coming to New Mexico. And I cannot be happier. I could not keep the secret anymore. I had the intent, so today I want to say thank you for making New Mexico your home. But I do think it may have been the worst kept secret. I heard earlier in the conference room that the, someone was picked up by an Uber driver and uh, was telling someone from this project, hey, do you know that Netflix is coming to <laughs> You're just going, Jesus, how does, this, how does this happen? But Netflix will purchase, of course, Albuquerque Studios, their first studio purchase in the United States. They first. They will bring one billion, with a B, one billion dollar investment to New Mexico over the next 10 years and create up to a thousand production jobs a year. This, this is awesome. <laughs> this massive investment will have a huge impact, of course, on New Mexico and continue our efforts to grow and diversify the economy. That is the one thing that we've talked about so much, is diversifying the economy. We rely heavily on our federal funding, we rely heavily on our, our oil and gas industry, but we have to have rely on the private sector, which is really the backbone of, of the economy in America, and of course the economy in New Mexico. And so we've worked very hard as a team, not as silos, to make sure that we're diversifying the, our, our economy, bringing all kinds of jobs and all kinds of industries. But this didn't happen overnight. Nothing happens overnight. It was only made possible by years of hard work, lots and lots of conversations. But as you know, and I remind you quite often, and I remind you because you have to remember where we were and then where we are. Um, and, and the work doesn't happen overnight and all of a sudden you go from a deficit of $450 million and all of a sudden you have a balanced budget and then everything is okay uh, without doing a few things. And so when we went from that $450 million budget, what we had to do is first get state government back on track. We had to set new priorities. We had to cut wasteful spending. We found wasteful spending, and we did cut it. Um, we had to reduce the size of state government. It had grown by leaps and bounds unnecessarily. And of course, the bureaucracy had also grown in state government and reformed our spending practices. Um, we had to be able to spend money on the needs that provided for the people, uh, to give them room to be able to grow and have businesses here in New Mexico, if that's what they chose, or grow them, if that's what they chose, or make sure they were part of a business and working for a company, that they had those job opportunities. So as part of a broad bipartisan agreement to close our deficit, the legislature and I enacted significant changes to New Mexico's film incentive program, including, for the first time, capping the amount the state would pay each year in reimbursements for film and TV production expenses. These reforms prevented cuts to the classroom. It truly did. What we had before was when you have no cap, you can come in at 50 million, 75 million, 100 million, back down to 50 million, and who, where do we cut? If we're going to be paying out to the, to, uh, the movie industry. So we had to be responsible and make sure we weren't cutting in the classrooms. We weren't cutting health care. We weren't cutting higher education. We weren't cutting infrastructure for roads to be able to get people to and from work and school, etc. So we did place that cap. Now these reforms prevented that cutting in the classroom spending and healthcare services that would otherwise have been cut had we not capped it. Then, in 2013, in recognition that TV projects are typically longer running and provide more stable employment, I signed legislation that raised the cap to 30% for TV series in the Breaking Bad Bill. We saw that they were coming and staying longer and the New Mexicans were being employed for longer periods of time. 
These improvements brought stability. And that's important. Stability and predictability to the state budget and ensured the viability and the growth of the film incentive for years to come. That is important to any business who moves to a different state. They want to make sure that the state government is predictable and stable. Because then with that, you can continue to provide the services for the people that live in that state, but also have the money and the funds for the infrastructure and to allow them to grow. And when they grow, we're there with them and partners with them as well. So since then, we've had three record-breaking years for film in New Mexico. Where is Mr. Mignatis? There you are. I want to see you stand up. Hard, uh, in the film uh, office and uh, we've had three record-breaking years for film in New Mexico and now New Mexico's film incentive is working incredibly well for our film industry workers as well as the industry but also for our taxpayers and as you can see it looks like this year will be another monumental year for the film industry in New Mexico from our first day in office we fought to make New Mexico a great place to do business. We have had our priorities straight. We cut taxes and fees 61 different times. When I took office, I promised you I was not going to raise taxes, not a single nickel on a single family or a single business. And the state has not raised a single tax on any of you because that does not incentivize businesses to come and families to bring, you know, their families and, and their children to come here to, to live in New Mexico and grow. We have had our priorities straight. We cut through the red tape and all that paperwork that sometimes has to be filled out. We've cut through that, we've streamlined it, and we got rid of unnecessary regulations. Regulations that don't give you something in return. Regulations that are on the books just for the sake of being on the books. So we reviewed them and we continue to review them. Just last week I signed an executive order that continues to remove unnecessary government regulations. We've also strengthened our closing fund, which is LIDA. And that strength needs to continue in the coming years. That has been a very valuable tool for us, that and JTIP. Now after years of laying the groundwork and strengthening our film incentive, building the film infrastructure, and growing our powerful job creation tools, we're attracting global companies like Netflix to our state. I'm so proud that Netflix, one of the world's leaders in streaming media production and entertainment, has chosen New Mexico for their first ever production studio. You know, Netflix, I cannot tell you how much we appreciate your commitment and your investment in New Mexico and as of today, you are a valued partner in our community. And we thank you. We wish you the very best. God bless you and much success in everything you do in our state. Thank you, Governor, and thank you for giving us the tools and the confidence in us to be able to work together, and, and that's what this has been about, bipartisanship. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how when this thing started to come together, staffs from both the state and the city got together, the mayor and the governor said, get together, figure it out, let's get this done, and pulled a bunch of folks together to start off as a dinner and uh, kind of blossomed from there. And, um, and I think that, that just goes to speak to what really New Mexico is about in this time of partisan politics of campaigns going on and people kind of taking barbs at one another. The truth is the work that's going on behind the scenes isn't partisan. It's about New Mexico. It's making New Mexico a better place for everybody to live. And that's why I'm excited to be able to introduce the next, our next speaker, the Mayor Albuquerque. is a former colleague. We served together in the state legislature. I knew Tim before that. I'm sorry, Mayor, it's hard for me. Um, we've always known each other. Uh, from that, we've worked together for years on a variety of different things, from when you were a senator, before you were a senator, um, when you represented the International District of, of um, Albuquerque, to when you were the state auditor, uh, during times when we worked together. Sometimes we agreed, sometimes we disagreed, but we always worked together. 
and then now as, as mayor of Albuquerque. And want to thank you publicly um, for, for what you've allowed your staff to do. And we're excited here. You've got a distinguished career from business times to your legislative and, and public leadership uh, landslide win as mayor back in December. Um, so uh, it's been a great, great run. And look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you, Mayor. Well, Albuquerque, I have been thinking about this day for some time. I got to tell you, and the governor mentioned this too, you know, I've been out at Balloon Fiesta. I hope you all have joined this as well. And literally, I watch the balloons go up, and in my head, I'm like, which one is the Netflix balloon? Where's the Netflix balloon? And then I can't say anything about it. And then I'll make some joke about something called Helm's Bakery to the person next to me. And some folks will know that was the code name for this project. So, uh, But I got to say, this is such a special day for our city and our community and our state. And so I'm going to thank a lot of folks at the end, but let me just start by saying this. You know, a lot of times we come up as politicians or public servants and we say, you know, this is a game changer. I hear that all the time, and I've probably said that a lot about a lot of things. But let's be honest, it usually isn't quite a game changer. This is Netflix in Albuquerque is a huge deal for our community. We heard some of the stats, but we're talking about $1 billion of economic impact. You're talking about 1,000 jobs a year. We're talking about $27 million in wages, peaking out at $56 million in wages in five years. This is a catalyst for this entire region and for our state. And I hope that when we look back upon these large economic development projects that have literally transformed our city and lifted up our state, things like Intel, I think in that conversation, this is the next name after that. Folks are going to look back 10 years from now and be like, wow, Albuquerque was the home to one of the biggest media companies in the world. That is awesome. That is now part of our city's story. So a couple of other stories that I want to share with you today. One is the story of this place, this studio and Mesa del Sol. You know, we've had some good times, some rough times. And I appreciate uh, the, the chief of staff, Keith Gardner. You know, I think we, we were here 10 years ago, I think, when this, when for some event. And, uh, and then, you know, the governor and I actually worked together on a lot of those film bills. And some irony, I was the sponsor for many of those. Uh, but film is a huge part of New Mexico and a big, big part of Albuquerque. And so this area, too, right here is, of course, part of Mesa del Sol, our largest unfinished development. And we've had some positive improvements out here of late, but nothing like bringing Netflix right here to Mesa del Sol. So this is going to kickstart this entire uh, planned community out here and also, I think, restart growth throughout Albuquerque. Now, there's another story here around the film industry, and the governor mentioned how important this is, but I think it's not lost on anyone how special this industry is. A couple of things about it. Number one, it actually brings together a lot of the same things as the balloon fiesta. It capitalizes on our cultural heritage. That is a big piece of why folks come and film here. And also, of course, our natural beauty. You put those two things together, you get things like Balloon Fiesta, you get cities like Albuquerque, but you also get things like Netflix being interested in producing here. So to us, this is part of our core strategy. This is part of one Albuquerque. This is part of leveraging what we're good at and building on that and taking it to the next level. And this is also about accessible jobs for folks from all walks of life. So if you're not that familiar with film jobs, they are extra special in the American workforce today. What I mean by that is the following. They often don't even require a specific college degree, yet they pay extremely well. It's a more of an apprenticeship model. And this model makes it accessible for folks from all walks of life, but also the average wages are much, much higher than lots of times other entry level jobs and so forth. Plus, you acquire all sorts of trade skills that then you can use either moving up the food chain in the film industry or in other industries around our state. And so film plays an extra special role in our workforce. And that's why I'm so glad we're going to have a thousand more folks out here uh, doing that kind of work in Albuquerque. Now, let me also mention, I think, one uh, item about the gentlemen and the ladies who put this together. This truly is a reflection of a long road when it comes to the film industry and everything that many in this room have built. 
but it's also the reflection of a short road. It is very true that I think when we first sat down with Netflix, uh, both the governor and I agreed, we said, we've got to get this done as soon as we can and make it real. And there's a small piece that we gotta finish, and that's why I wanna put our city council president, Ken Sanchez, on the spot, because he's gonna finish the job with some votes there down at council, so I'm glad you're here with us today, council president. But, you know, when I met originally with, uh, with Rajiv and Jason, uh, and they're here from the Netflix team, I remember we were in our office talking <clears throat> a little bit about our, our common backgrounds and sort of where we wanted to go with this project. But I was always struck also by Netflix's, their, their humility and their focus. You know, it is an organization, they're a lot different than a lot of companies in this space. And they had a similar approach. They're like, you know what, this is interesting. Let's focus on it, let's see if we can get it done. And we're not gonna get hung up on small things that usually end up killing big projects like this. And so we found a real kindred spirit in Netflix. And uh, Ty, it's great that you're here with us today. We're gonna get you back for Balloon Fiesta. But let me thank the City Film Office, uh, of course our Economic Development Director, AED, everyone at City Hall and at the state. Uh, we pushed through a lot of issues between city and state that I think would have lasted normally years, and we took care of it all in like six months. So uh, credit to both our administrations and uh, let me end with uh, talking about somebody I think in particularly special who we're going to hear from in a minute. You know, we all, I think, love to collaborate and we all have a role to play in building New Mexico and in building Albuquerque, especially elected officials, of course. But at the end of the day, I know that we can do as much as we can, but sometimes there's actually one individual who has a much, much larger role. And in this case, that is absolutely true. We can all take all the credit we want, but I will tell you there is one person who really pulled this deal together with her personal relationships, her background in the industry. Basically, all I did for this was hire Alicia Keys. Let's give her a round of applause. She is the future of New Mexico film and beyond. Thank you so much, Alicia, on behalf of the city and our entire community. Thank you, Mayor. You know, it's, 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 as the mayor alluded to, there's a lot of work that goes on. Uh, I, late night calls with the governor. I know um, uh, Sarita, he didn't mention her by name. We had a phone call. You were talking to the mayor late at night. I'll, I'll never forget, if I can, I was pushing a cart. Um, my wife called me on my way home from work. It had been a particularly long day in the office. And um, my phone rings, and it's Sarita. It's about 7 o'clock at night. And I'm pushing the grocery cart, a little upset that I'm wet from a rainstorm. Thrilled that it rained, by the way, but upset that I'm soaking wet and that I'm at Walmart in the middle of the night and I'm buying milk for the grandsons. And a little issue had arisen in, in the deal. And, and I remember both of us saying, this is really what we're talking about at 7 o'clock at night on a Wednesday. But that's what the effort that it took, that it was all hands on deck from the beginning. And it truly has been a great partnership, an amazing partnership. The culmination of that is getting wonderful people um, to come into the room and, and these projects don't happen unless companies recognize the state and the city and the place where to do business. They have options. This is a global company, can go anywhere in the world, has facilities and, and investments throughout the world. And so when you start to talk about, and we do these economic development trips, they're truly an opportunity, they have the opportunity to invest anywhere they want. They get to pick the best of the best. They get to say, no, we don't really like that because of whatever your structure or whatever. We're going to go where we can be the most successful because ultimately that's what they have to do. A felt project obviously doesn't look good for anyone. And so as in the middle of this project, it wouldn't have been successful for all the city, the state, everyone has done. These aren't available unless there's individuals willing to, as a part of their jobs, on a daily basis to look at us, to look at little old New Mexico and little old Albuquerque and say, this is where we want our home. Ty Warren is one of those individuals who sent his team out to sit and talk, and we'll talk about Jason Rajiv here in a minute, but uh, Ty sent his team out to say, go look at New Mexico. Go see what New Mexico has to offer. Ty's got an impressive background. He graduated from Harvard. I told him I had to use the right accent when it says Harvard. Um, he's also become a fixture. Um, he said that makes him sound old. He's not old, obviously. So he's a young fixture in the entertainment industry. Um, he's worked for companies like Universal, DreamWorks, Legendary Entertainment, and now he's leading the physical production team at Netflix. It's really our pleasure to, we're able to welcome you, Ty, to New Mexico, and a new New Mexican, um, Ty Warren. We look forward to hearing from you.
Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ty Warren. I'm the uh, Vice President of Physical Production uh, at Netflix. Uh, thank you, Governor Martinez and, and Mayor Keller, and thank you uh, to everybody for joining us here today. I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Um, Netflix, we've been shooting here uh, in New Mexico as far back as 2015, including our most recent uh, Emmy Award winning limited series, Godless. Uh, and what we found, yes, well, I give it up for Godless. <laughs> Such a good show. Uh, and what we found is a fantastic infrastructure that exists in New Mexico because of the legacy of production here, including one of the greatest shows of all time, one of my all time favorites, Breaking Bad. There's a stunning variety of landscapes combined with stellar facilities and knowledgeable, experienced crew, and you can't find that everywhere. At the same time, we know that life can sometimes be hard for crew members. When there's not enough work here, sometimes they need to choose between feeding their families and seeing their families, often traveling out of state for months at a time. That means being away from their spouses and kids and missing those amazing life moments just because they're trying to put food on their table. I was one of those people when I was working freelance where I had to travel all over the United States and all over the globe uh, to earn a living. And so today, with the thanks of Governor Martinez and Mayor Keller, we are thrilled to announce our plans to open a U.S. production hub right here in Albuquerque. We're in the, we're in the midst of final negotiations to purchase Albuquerque Studios, and we'll make this facility our new Netflix home away from home. Uh, the way to think about this is uh, as the Netflix Studios of the Southwest. Our initial plans are to produce several series here, including our irreverent apocalypse dramedy, uh, Daybreak, on which this is uh, the set, uh, which is in pre-production and should begin shooting soon. Our presence in Albuquerque is already more than that, with other shows like Chambers and Messiah, which are also shooting in the area. With the level of production we plan to bring, we hope that working crew won't have to make those tough decisions as much anymore, and beyond that, we hope to bring new people into the industry by working with the government and local training facilities. Of course, we would love, uh, we love shooting at our existing studios from Los Angeles all the way to Madrid, but with the right infrastructure, crew base, and financial climate, we're thrilled to now also make a home here. And we hope you'll share that feeling as 130 million members around the world view and enjoy high quality, hugely entertaining productions made right here in Albuquerque. Thank you very much. So last but certainly not the least, as, as Mayor Keller brought up, uh, the, the Albuquerque film director who started some of this, you know, when I first was told uh, I was going to be uh, have a meeting with Alicia Keys, I was really excited. <laughs> I thought, wow, the singer's going to come. I love her music. She's great, right? And so I, I was so excited to have Alicia Keys come to the office, and then I was even more excited when I got to know the Alicia Keys that I've gotten to know um, through working together. And Alicia's been, we've had a long uh, a, a friendship uh, during the years that, that I've worked for the governor, and, and she's been a big part of, of film in New Mexico. Um, she's obviously now the director of the Albuquerque Film Department, but also uh, has done over 20 years of film in, in New Mexico. She served as a chair for the Governor's Film Council previously, still on the Governor's Film Council, and she started a production company named AJK Films LLC, where she served as a producer and a writer since 2004. Before that, she was executive director of worldwide acquisition and co-production for the Walt Disney Company from 99 to 2003. She started when she was 12. And he's graduated from Albuquerque Academy. I won't say when, because then you'll know how old she was when she did that, because I, I'm here. But um, please welcome Alicia Keys. To Well, in 2002, the state film and television tax incentives were put into place. So it has taken us 16 years to get to this place today, welcoming Netflix to Albuquerque. I see individuals in this room who created our crew base, our educational programs. I see legislators and members of administrations and elected officials that supported the industry even when it wasn't popular. We are partnering with Netflix today because of all of you. This deal happened because you believed in creating a new industry and an economic driver for New Mexico. 
I feel fortunate to work with Mayor Keller, CAO Sarita Nair, and Economic Development Director Cynthia Hermio, because they all urge me to ask the question, what can we do better? Partnering with Netflix is one of the answers. So thank you, Mayor Keller, for supporting this industry as a legislator, and now as our mayor, and continuing to push us to think differently. This deal would not happen without our friends at the state, who even though they just rolled off a plane from Taiwan, met us for breakfast burritos in Bernalillo, and hashed out the deal. So thank you to Keith and Matt and Nick. This deal not only means $1 billion in spend to New Mexico, it means we are now calling our seasoned production managers and asking them if they want to be production supervisors. It means that the kids coming out of Grubb's UNM crew training program, they'll have jobs right when they come out. It means companies like Rax Lover can continue to employ an extra 10 people to service the five to $20,000 of business they do each day with production companies. And it means barricade companies like Southwest Safety could potentially add more people to join their already 13 employees that service the $20,000 of business they bring in for film and television each year. On a personal level, for a local girl, this feels really good. <laughs> I made a decision to come home, um, which when you're living in LA and you think it's everything, that's a really scary decision. So I feel like doubling down in Albuquerque has paid off. <laughs> um, for a city and state, I feel like this is the next step in our industry's progression, and I hope that we continue to challenge ourselves. And I hope that we never hesitate to expect the best for our New Mexicans. In closing, thank you to Netflix for agreeing to be our partner. We look forward to having you as part of this community. Thank you to the governor and the mayor for backing this deal. And really, a lot of people know the struggle we've had with this industry. Thank you to the New Mexicans who have supported us, even when it wasn't popular, and helped this industry get its legs and now take off. Thank you. recognizing a few of the folks who've been really key in, in making sure that haven't been, I know a lot of the folks have been been recognized, but I'm going to embarrass a couple of gentlemen from Netflix that have um, not in the back, and yes, Roger, you can, you can lower your head a little bit more, but they're still going to see you. <laughs> Sitting back in the corner, uh, Rajiv Dalal and, and Jason Harrington from, um, the, the, from Netflix, we've uh, been working with them for a very long period of time. Wave your hand so everybody can recognize who you are. And thank you guys. And a few nights of no sleep um, dealing with some of these issues to get this uh, uh, over the finish line. Also, uh, you know, the early on when in the governor's tenure, when she we started going on these trade missions and start knocking on doors of people that we had never visited before. Um, there was a group from Albuquerque, uh, Albuquerque Economic Development, Gary Tonjes and his team, along with Secretary Matt Geisel, our Secretary of Economic Development, that whether it was an Albuquerque project or somewhere in New Mexico project, it didn't matter. Uh, um, Gary, Deb, the team from AED, Matt um, as our secretary, were always there to try and knock on those doors and make sure that every economic opportunity was brought to New Mexico. So it would be, we would be remiss if we didn't recognize AED's partnership with the state. And you know what they did. Thank you very much. Also, um, as I mentioned, Secretary Geisel, Secretary Matt Geisel, um, people think that sometimes being the Economic Development Secretary, you're the, the Pied Piper, you just give, give out a fleet of money to everybody. Um, he has to say more no's than he does yes, and so he gets beat up pretty good for that sometimes um, by me and others. So I want to recognize and appreciate Matt as a part of the governor's team that really works hard on, on bringing these projects. So Matt, wait and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nick Pinatas, who uh, is a dear friend, I always say Nick helped me lose my first campaign. It was great. I appreciate that. So it's our claim to fame. It's our bond for life that we've done. Uh, Nick's an incredible hand and, and actually has been a steady hand at the film office and has really taken it to the next level. And uh, on a personal level, um, I'm so grateful for you and, your, and, and what you've done, Nick. So thank you and publicly recognize all the work. 
And really, most importantly, I want to thank, as Alicia said, the New Mexicans that are in this room today that are benefiting from the film. Thank you for working. Thank you for showing up and, and, and being the crew base that you are. Thank you for making New Mexico what it is, the great, great state that we have in order to do it. I want to thank my boss for allowing me to be here and to do this job and to be able to do these things and a part of it in the governor's leadership on film and on other parts of our economy to make New Mexico in a position that we can sustain this. Mayor, thank you for coming and being here. Uh, we appreciate the partnership and the time together. Ty, this isn't the end. We hope this isn't the end. We're not going to make these announcements after the, after the, uh, the chairman and, and uh, the hey, councilman Sanchez after this is done. We know this is just the beginning of just the first phase of a lot more to come from Netflix, and we're excited about the long-term partnership. Bienvenidos a Nuevo Mexico. Welcome to our great state. We're, you'll find it as enchanting as we do. Um, be careful because it can get you. You can, you'll, you'll never want to leave. You'll be like Alicia. You'll always want to come back. Once we get you, we're going to keep you. And so we're excited to have you as a part of New Mexico. And welcome Netflix to New Mexico. For the media, we'll do interviews on the side after this is over. So we appreciate you all being here. Thank you, everybody, for showing up today. Celebrate today. Celebrate New Mexico. Sometimes we tend to beat ourselves up. We're a great place to do business. We're open for business. And it's reflected in today in this investment by an amazing company in Netflix. Thank you, New Mexicans, for allowing us to do this. Thank you.